Hi guys, it's the Tuesday after Martin Luther King and um, I feel like recording my day. So I woke up late around noon. I've still been getting really bad sleep. I couldn't sleep until 6 a.m. And uh, yeah, still been coughing. Talking is still difficult. Anyways, I'm trying to start my day off right. So I made myself some oatmeal. It's just oatmeal, raspberries, and blueberries. Hopefully this is going to taste good. If the fruit is bad, then this is going to be miserable. And I also made myself some jasmine tea. So I've been resuming drinking a lot of tea lately. Um, Jose kind of inspired me because he got sick first. He had a cough first and he started drinking tea and wanted to add honey to it. And that started our journey to going to the Santee Farmer's Market where we started buying on a weekly basis honey from this one vendor. And um, <clears throat> we also bought oranges. And those oranges we've been buying every single week. They taste amazing. I look forward to them every week. Today's Tuesday. I can't wait for tomorrow because we'll go and get some more. And we've been buying a lot, like eight each per person. Because when I eat oranges, I like to cut two. Um, otherwise, it goes away so fast. So I eat two per serving, which means that eight is not a lot. That's just four servings. So this upcoming week, if possible, I want to buy way more because we've been getting like 15 um, total and splitting it between us. So a little story for you. I have also once again been wanting to cook more and eat better. Um, Milan went home on Saturday, so I have my time to myself again. And with that, I wanna cook again. I wanna be more healthy. I um, stopped working out as much while she was here, partially, mainly because I'm sick. If I'm exercising, even the hikes that I did the past two days with Riley didn't really feel that great because if I'm exercising, I'm breathing harder, which means that the air is passing through my throat faster and more frequently, and that can be very uncomfortable. So I didn't want to force working out on myself when um, my body isn't feeling right. And I guess I wanted to give myself a break in order to recover. It's just taking a while. So honestly, I'm not really sure if I want to work out just yet because I have difficulty just talking. So if I'm working out and I'm um, increasing my heart rate and I'm making myself my breathing harder, I just don't know if that's going to be um, that comfortable. So I guess I'll see. But um, I have been feeling a little bit impatient as well because I don't like just not working out would like to get back into really good shape by the time spring comes around today I feel like it's mostly going to be filled with focusing on work during the day of course because last week getting really bad sleep so I took two days of sick day and um, the other days just wasn't really able to focus so I haven't done a lot of work and I need to catch up. Aside from that, I want to take her biking soon. I've been trying to bike with her um, more frequently, ideally on a daily basis. Um, I miss days like yesterday and the day before because I took her hiking. But I want to try to build up her stamina a little more. I do feel like um, the time I was living at my previous house she wasn't running very much and that slipped my mind because I was walking her every day. I want to get her running more again. I'm not sure if that's something I'll build up to eventually where she's actually running next to the bike, but I think I might be okay with her just power walking with me on the bike just a little bit faster because right now um, I feel like I have to lower my gear quite a lot for her to not be pulled a little bit or... Um, yeah, her stamina is just not really good. I could tell because she gets tired very fast. She pants very hard, very fast. And, um, plus if she isn't running next to my bike, we can actually go further because she's 
maintaining her stamina. I would actually really like to bike with her somewhere else outside of my own neighborhood. The thing is, I would just need to buy a bike rack because I can't fit my bike and have her in the impact crate in my car together. The car's not big enough for that. Totally fine and enjoyable biking here. I just feel like it would be fun to take her to different places and bike with her as well. I plan on finishing my movie. I am hoping to start on my next book. So I finished reading, I don't even know the name of it, Melinda Gates' book. Yeah, wow, I don't know the name of it. But anyways, um, I want to read Tess of the Durbyvilles. I think that's how you pronounce it. The main reason I chose that book is because I wanted to read a period book about women. And this one seemed like it was popular as well as people were saying it's like Pride and Prejudice, but not a happy ending. And it's just sad the whole time. And I don't know. I was just curious. So I want to start that soon. And I hope... I enjoy it. Hopefully just do some low key things today. Uh, do some laundry, hang up my clothes, organize a little bit. I'm going to stop talking for now and start my day feeling kind of hungry right now. <laughs> All right, it's bike time. It's very windy out though. So <coughs> if it turns out to be terrible, then I won't just stay out for very long. Dogs are so weird. They get so messed up from random things like this that they're not very familiar with. And honestly, she has wore this a couple times. She just always acts weird. <laughs> just finished my bike ride with Riley and um, well originally I was kind of rethinking it because it's pretty windy today but wanted to try it out um, didn't go for very long because the wind and exercising and breathing harder actually did bother me um, made my throat very uncomfortable so I decided to turn back fairly soon and um, I have been pretty sidetracked when it comes to doing work I was looking at my old YouTube videos again I always do that I go down memory lane so was very very surprised to see that when I was uploading the most was three to four years ago and um, it just doesn't feel that long that's a long time so uh, yeah Sometimes I watch them over and it's like the same thing as what I experienced with Dota where I go back and I watch the video and I'm like, wow, it sounds like I had a lot of fun doing this run or playing at this moment. And then like currently, I'm not really getting that enjoyment out of the game. It's very, very selective and I think it's too infrequent for my liking. So. Um, just some thoughts that I'm having right now but actually right now and today my eye is twitching a lot I get the feeling it's from my continuous lack of sleep like my eyes feel kind of strained and um, uh, it's not feeling very good but I need to focus on some work I have been pretty bad today okay so yesterday 
I was in line at the Julian Pie Company, and unfortunately they told me that they are only selling whole pies right now. I did not know that while I was waiting in line. So instead of having my wait time go to waste, I decided to buy a whole pie. Definitely way too much for me. Anyways, I'm gonna try to eat it. Unfortunately, that's not really how I want to be eating right now. I don't want to be eating pie every day. Honestly, I don't know the ingredients of pie. It does feel pretty sweet though, so I'm wondering if it's not all natural ingredients. I got peach apple crumb, which is my favorite from the Julian Pie Company. But um, I just tried to take a nap and it didn't go over well. I'm pretty sure every time you're horizontal, it messes with your sinuses or just like agitates my throat more. I end up coughing more or it was more like, yeah, something was just uncomfortable here while I was lying down. So even though I felt like I was definitely tired enough to fall asleep. I just didn't want to lie there and not sleep, so I got up. Um, definitely can sleep because I just feel drowsy and not very energized. I am going to finish watching my movie. I already did my workout earlier, so I'm pretty much just relaxing the end of the night. Um, I wanted to eat dinner, like a proper meal before this pie, but Yesterday when I ate the pie, I wasn't really, I felt a little full for it, I guess. So I'm going to try to eat this on a more empty stomach and hopefully finish it all. I just finished watching another round and I wanted to watch it because of the director, Thomas Finterberg. He directed Far From the Madding Crowd and I wasn't really a big fan of this movie. Um, the plot is basically about a group of four friends who tries to test out how having a small amount of alcohol in their system at all times could affect their life, whether it's positive or negative. I had this weird moment earlier where I was trying to eat dinner. I had some rotisserie chicken, some broccoli, and some white rice, and this was after I had my pie, but after I ate it, or like actually while I was trying to eat it at the very beginning, my heart rate got high for some reason. It was like in the 90s and normally my resting heart rate is in the 60s. So when I was feeling that while eating, I was like, what the hell is going on? This is very strange. Like it was making it feel uncomfortable. And actually I wasn't too hungry. So um, yeah, I'll just, I've been enjoying eating um, celery and ranch as a snack. And I have some fruit banana. I have the Sandy Farmer's Market tomorrow, which I'm very much looking forward to. Um, and I have some tea that I just made, and I want to settle down for another movie. So Hustlers is a movie that I might check out. First off, that movie I initially disregarded because of I don't know. I just assumed it would be like a bad, trashy, garbage movie. But I don't want to let reviews tell me what to watch. I want to sample it for myself and see. So I think I'll try it out. If not, I might consider watching something I've seen before because I definitely want to at least sometime tonight watch something that I love. Hustlers probably isn't going to turn out to be that way, but um, yeah, I, I just want to see what happens with that. You guys know she's five years old now. Her birthday passed during the board and I forgot about it for two whole days. That made me really sad. So every year on her birthday, I take her hiking and I was unable to due to the board. We made up for it two days in a row. I hiked with her Sunday and um, Monday, but still doesn't feel right. I don't know. I have actually always really enjoyed carrots and celery with ranch. I've just always been very lazy to prepare it for myself. All right, so since I have already seen two new movies today, both of which I did not technically enjoy. 
I was thinking I wanted to watch something that I've seen before that I really like. But I can't think of anything. I was gonna do Far From the Madden Crowd, but I was like, oh fuck, I've seen that a lot lately. Like, I actually feel like I've seen it at least two times in the past year. And um, I just don't want to wear it out so fast. I do love that movie though. And you know what's interesting? I was reading the user reviews for that movie. And a lot of people, well, I don't want to say a lot of people, but I saw some reviews that said that they didn't like it, that like the plot doesn't make sense or that like it's childish. And truthfully, the very first time I saw that movie, I didn't like it very much because I was very annoyed at the actions of the main character, Bathsheba Everdeen. Um, and yes, every time I watch it over, I'm pretty sure that her actions would still feel the same way to me as the first time I saw it. But I think that I have chosen to appreciate other things about the movie and focus less on certain aspects that agitate me. Like for example, in the movie, she ends up owning her uncle's farm, it gets passed down to her, so she's in a position of power and um, has to, you know, work hard to earn the respect of her workers because she's a woman during that time. And there's three suitors for her in the movie. Matthias Schoenertz, who I love. I like watching anything he's in for the most part. Um, he plays Gabriel Oak. And then the second one is Tom Crap. I don't know his name very well because I don't see him much in anything else, but he plays, well, he plays a soldier that's heartbroken because he was going to marry his love and back then it's hard to communicate if you're not face to face and they got their churches mixed up. So she didn't show up and he got very, very upset and I guess like they weren't able to come across each other again. So he comes across Bathsheba. And I feel like he's probably in a heartbroken, um, I'm trying to think of the word where you're kind of like self-destructive, where you don't care about anything at all and you're okay with hurting people because you are in a lot of pain. So I feel like that was the state he was in. And he meets her and he just kind of like gets, he, he compliments her, he says and does things to her she has never had done to her before. So I think it kind of like sweeps her off her feet, flatters her, and they get married very quickly. And he ends up just being a terrible husband to her. He gambles a lot, he loses all their money, he treats other people poorly. And um, yeah, so the period where she marries him and she gets like very infatuated with him, I hated that part of the movie the first time I watched it because I was like, what the hell are you doing? Like I viewed her as a very respectable, um, strong-willed, courageous, just like an awesome woman that was a great role model for those times in terms of like not letting their rules define her. And then she goes and does this thing which seemed very childish, I'll admit. And um, yeah, that bothered me a lot the first time I watched it. But now when I watch it, I think I focus more on um, like the pining aspect. So I focus more on watching how Matthias does his character, um, still trying to be supportive of her like he always has been. And I like to just admire Carrie because I love her as an actress. I think she has come such a long way and sometimes I just compare careers a bit. So Carrie, her first movie ever was actually Pride and Prejudice. She played Kitty Bennett. And um, I kind of feel like, I feel like she eclipsed Kira Knightley, in my opinion. So Kira, um, I don't know what her first acting role was, but when she did Pride and Prejudice, she was 19 and she was nominated for an Oscar for her role. She did fantastic. I love, uh, obviously, <laughs> Obviously, I love her in that movie. It's my favorite movie. One of my favorite movies. I love that movie to death. So, 
Um, Kira has done a lot of period roles. She's done Anna Karenina. Um, she has done The Duchess. She's done Atonement, which isn't really period, but still feels like it in a sense. Same director as Pride and Prejudice. So now when I think of Kira, I haven't felt like she has done anything that great recently. I mean, I've seen the films she's been in, but none of them stand out to me. But I just recently watched Promising Young Woman with Carrie Mulligan and I love that movie. I've seen it twice already this week and that's my limit. I'm not gonna watch it anymore. However, I have like gone back and watched some scenes from that movie because I find them kind of adorable. The scenes of her and Bo Burnham when he's trying to ask her out on, on a date, those are very sweet. Uh, well anyways, back to Far From the Manning Crowd. There's a lot of things that I love about that movie. Obviously, I love the landscape. I love seeing all of that. Um, I like... Period films are always weird for me because they always, always show, like, women having shitty fucking lives. I just watched Belle over the other day. Belle has Gugu Mbatha-Ra in the lead role, and I specifically wanted to watch that movie because I wanted to watch a period film recently that's not Pride and Prejudice or Far From the Manning Crowd. So, yeah, movies like that. Um, I love them to death, but the women's lives in them are fucking awful. It's all about marriage and being property. So, um, yeah, and Far From the Madding Crowd, obviously, I love the character of Bathsheba because she's very just independent. I love that trait so much. And I feel like that is one of the traits that I would like to think I have. Being independent is definitely one of the traits that I have come to be most proud of for myself. And I don't know, I feel like I say that because I was definitely one of those people who um, was a bit way too dependent on their boyfriends when I was dating when I was younger. And I hated that. When I think of it now too, I hate it. It's so icky to think that um, if you don't have their interaction or if you're not communicating with them that you kind of just like are unable to live and enjoy what you're doing in the moment. And you know what? I'll admit that I was still a little bit that way early on when I was dating Jose in um, January. That month I remembered feeling very, very low the whole month. We were still long distance and I was having a really hard time with that. Really, really hard time with that. And you know what? There were other things that I was struggling with that I wanted to accept because there were a lot of aspects of him that were different from my previous relationships that I wanted to embrace and hope to learn from. So for example, all of my previous boyfriends were people I gamed a lot with. Either I met them through gaming online or I met them through some sort of gaming avenue in person. So that is honestly just an activity that I love to do with a boyfriend. But, I've said this before, gaming is a tough thing for me because I'm super competitive and I can't casually game. It's, it's very hard for me to casually game. I can't find enjoyment out of that. Not um, like the most enjoyment I could get out of gaming especially. So, uh, well, you know, I think I've been kind of lucky in that where it's not always been drastically different. Um, well, my first official boyfriend was someone I met on WoW. He was somebody that I played arenas with. He was a warrior that I got my highest rating with. We played double healer warrior during Wrath. And um, I just feel like for me, I have always been very attracted to people who are very good at games. And um, it's a stupid attraction because it occurs without me even knowing who they are. Like, I can play with someone for a day or two, and if I see they're really good, and then I feel something coming on. And, uh, I hate that. Because I'm like, I don't know shit about this person outside of their skill in a game, and I'm still feeling something. So anyways, 
Um, first boyfriend met through WoW. Second boyfriend technically also met through WoW. And he was local-ish. He was in eastern Pennsylvania and I was still in central New Jersey. So he was about 45 minutes away, but that's actually like local to me in a lucky way because um, I don't like long distance. So anyways, second boyfriend, um, we did arenas together and I do remember him being a pretty good player. Um, then third boyfriend, I'm in college and we played lead together. We played League together. I remember that one being a little bit of a different dynamic because I wanted to play in a more competitive way and I did not think he was as good as me. So sometimes I wanted to play um, with other people that were more competitive in solo ranked or duo queue since that was allowed in League. And that definitely pulled me in different directions because, well, it seems like an asshole move to ditch your boyfriend, right? To play with somebody else. Um, I've thought about that a couple times too because I felt that dynamic myself when me and Jose were playing Valorant. Um, I was new to f FPS on computers, so I had to learn from scratch. So yes, in the very beginning, it was pretty awful. I'll say that that kind of caused a little bit of conflict between us because I felt really bad. Like I felt very, very negative being at a party with anybody because I knew I sucked and I hated being in that position so much. I have never been in that position before because by the time I usually met someone to play with, I had already played for a decent amount of time to be decent or good at something. I had never been on the opposite end of the spectrum. So to start from nothing, felt pretty terrible and I was like constantly worrying like man I want you to be able to play ranked but I want to play with you too and just blah 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 but I guess the outcome of that was I did manage to actually get decent I guess you can say but didn't play it long enough to really see if I could get much better but um that that one did I, I found that instance pretty interesting because I struggled with it pretty hard um, anyways, after the boyfriend from college, then I dated someone I met off Dota. And <laughs> for him, he was definitely another one of those people where I met him. Actually, that one was interesting. I met him through someone I knew from WoW. So there was somebody in BC. Yeah, in BC and Wrath. I was playing with someone. And... He is from New Jersey. And then a couple years later, we finally met up in person and spent some time together. And he told me about his friend that was really into Dota, that plays really high ranked and goes to the international, TI. So I was like, oh wow, that's really cool. We ended up playing together with this wow person. And then eventually, yeah, I just developed a crush on him from his fucking uh, Dota skill. But I'll admit that we were on um, whatever we were using, Skype or I don't know if Discord existed then yet, but we were on voice a couple times playing together. And um, I, I just think it's kind of funny how all of my previous boyfriends always stemmed from similar scenarios through gaming. So with Jose... We weren't really able to game together because he doesn't play games very much. He never really played them seriously and he also plays a different genre than me. So that was something we could never share together. I was very, very disappointed in myself for still having traits of dependency at my age. Because I had hoped that by the time I had my next relationship I would be the model girlfriend. Not body wise. I meant character wise where I would be composed independent still independent still that was something I was very very sad about that once I got in a relationship I no longer felt like I had that sense of independence because I was like oh I want to do this with him I want to do this with him I want to talk with him I want to interact with him it's just like I felt too dependent so um total detour from what I was trying to say earlier 
and I don't really think I want to keep rambling on about this, otherwise I'll never get to what I want to watch. Yeah, it's 10.13 right now. I still have time. But I think I'm going to settle on... I'm going to settle on Gilmore Girls because I've been watching that over again from season one and I love it. Every single time I watch that show, I think I relate the most to Lorelai and her mother, their inability to understand each other. I relate to that a lot. So yeah, every time I watch it, I, I always have moments where I tear up because I understand what she's feeling, the stress and frustration. So I love the shit out of that show. I'm so sad that shows like that don't exist anymore and are probably incapable of existing, but I will always have that show to cherish. So. I'm gonna watch it. I'll talk to you guys later.